But would you please help me welcome our esteemed guest, Lieutenant Colonel Alan Beaver. Thank you. It's uh, good to be back here in uh, Springfield. Now, help me out, because I'm from Georgia. I, I used to jump out of airplanes, so I'm not really that smart. <laughs> Is it Missouri or Missouri? Really? Jeez, man. Well, the guy that drove me from the airport said, welcome to Springfield, Missouri. And I, and I just said, man, you're just confusing me. I don't even know where I am right now. Kind of like, you know, somebody said, well, it's good to be in Vermont when they were actually in New Hampshire. But that's okay. <laughs> I won't say anything else about that. But the last time I was here was two years ago, and it was for the Vitae Foundation. I mean, some of you all may know about the Vitae Foundation. It's a great pro-life organization. And I have to tell you something. We must honor our Declaration of Independence. We must understand that the first inalienable right to each and every one of us, born or unborn, is our right to life. And that is an inalienable right that is given to us by our Creator, not to protect it by man to launching leaders, prepared to launch, equipped to lead. And I want to start off with a couple of verses from the Bible that I think really does hone in on what we're talking about. This New Covenant Academy was established in 1979. That was the year that I graduated from high school and showed up at the University of Tennessee. Don't worry, the University of Missouri is going to be this this year because we really suck at football this year. <laughs> Okay, so don't hate on me, okay? Y'all got the W coming, all right? But that was the year that I ended up there at the University of Tennessee. And the two Bible verses that I want to share with you, that I want you to think about as I speak tonight. The first one is Proverbs 22, 6, where it says, Train up a child in the way that they should go, so that when they grow old, they shall not depart from it. And the second verse comes from Psalm 121, 127, verses 3 through 5. Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are children of one's youth. How blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies in the gate. When I think about that verse, and I look up here and I see that launching leaders and that arrow, parents, that's how we have to see our children. Our children is an incredible gift from God. It's an incredible reward that he has given to each and every one of us. These are the arrows that go into our quiver. And when I was 15 years of age, my father, who was a World War II veteran, and if you would understand something, that when my dad served in the United States Army as a corporal in World War II, he fought for a nation that did not give him all the rights and privileges it gave to others. But yet he fought for this great nation. My father raised up his oldest son. My father raised up his oldest son to also go and fight for this great nation. As a Marine, a Lance Corporal, infantry, in Vietnam, wounded at Khe Sanh, Charlie Company, 1st Battalion, 26 Marines. But that wasn't enough because he had another arrow in the quiver. And that was his middle son. And at the age of 15, in 1976, my dad sat me down on the steps of 651 Kennesaw Avenue in Atlanta, Georgia. That address is in a neighborhood called the Old Fourth Ward, the same neighborhood that gave us Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And my dad challenged me to be the first officer in our family as he drew that arrow and prepared to launch it. And then three years later, in 1982, in Stokely Athletic Center at the University of Tennessee, 31 July, there to my right shoulder stood U.S. Army Corporal Herman West Sr. And to my left shoulder, Elizabeth Thomas West. 
And I said these words that my father had said, that my older brother had said, that I, Alan Bernard West, will support, support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely without any purpose of evasion or mental reservation. So help me God. And on that day, 31 July 1982, my dad let loose that arrow that is the man that stands before you all here today. He launched me to be a leader of men in combat and a leader in these great United States of America. It's an incredible journey that a kid born and raised in the inner city of Atlanta, Georgia, Georgia born in 1961 in a blacks only hospital. In 1961, blacks could not go on Fort Lauderdale Beach. In 1961, blacks could not go on Palm Beach Island. But 50 years later, that arrow that he set launched became the congressional representative that represented Fort Lauderdale Beach and Palm Beach Island. You see, folks, that only happens if you train up a child in the way that they should go. So that when they grow old, they shall not depart from it. I think one of the most important things that we as parents need to understand, and, and I speak the same to my two daughters, 26 and 22. My oldest daughter just became a physician assistant in the trauma surgeon unit. My youngest daughter just graduated college, and she's a flight attendant with United Airlines. We trained them up the same way. We sent them to the same type of, well, religious schools because it's about their heart it's about their character that we have to develop our young children when they come into the world are nothing but an empty toolbox it's our responsibility to fill that toolbox with the essential tools that are needed for them to go out and be successful for them to go out and no matter what they face no matter what comes before them they shall not depart from the way because we have equipped them to do exactly that when I look at what is happening in the United States of America today with so many of our young people, folks, we've got to look at ourselves in the mirror as parents. We've got to step up. We have to raise that next generation. We have to launch those leaders. But I have to tell you something, it starts right here. And if we're not going back on our knees in prayer, then we're not going to draw that arrow out of our quiver and launch them and know that they will strike the target. Now, let's talk about how God does it. Because I have this great quote that I want to share with you. God doesn't call the equipped, but he equips those that he calls. And when you think about my favorite character, my greatest leader out of the Bible is Joshua. And imagine Joshua, this guy all of a sudden, that the Lord looks to him and says, you're going to be the one. You're going to take my people across into the promised land because Moses, my servant, is dead. So I want to remind you of what the Lord said to Joshua in chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. He said, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous. For you shall give the people possession of the land, which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may have success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be able to careful, be careful to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Verse 9, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. 
Think about the blessing that you have in New Covenant Academy. That every single day they're sharing this book of the law, which God told Joshua to not turn from it from the right or to the left. To meditate upon it day and night. So that they would have, he would have success and prosperity wherever he would go. This is why New Covenant is so important. This is why we have to restore this sense of Christian education. Because the secular education that we see today, it is failing our young people. I grew up, like I said, I ended up in a, in a inner city high school, Grady High School in Atlanta, Georgia. Sure, I was the cadet ROTC battalion commander and all these type of things, but there were no police officers in our high school. There were no metal detectors in our high school. We were still praying in school again. At the start of football games, we had a local minister would come down for every football game and he would pray. I don't remember catastrophic injuries and things like that. The, the blood of Jesus was over each and every one of us there. But look at what is happening in our schools today. Because we have allowed people to tell us this whole thing about separation of church and state. What they're trying to do is separate our Judeo-Christian faith heritage from who we are as a nation. And if you understand our founding documents, that is a bold-faced lie, and that's deception. But at least here at New Covenant, you're training up your children in the way that they should go, so that possibly when they grow old, they shall not depart from it. And if we're going to do this thing about launching leaders. It starts with us in the home and it starts with them being able to understand that their foundation, their strength, their courage, they will never be forsaken. They will never be left behind by this Lord that we serve, God Almighty, and His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins. The interesting thing about Joshua and this incredible book is that Joshua never turned his back and gave up on the Lord. If you study all the battles that he was in, Joshua only lost one battle. And that was the first battle of Ai. Because that first battle of Ai, well, one of Joshua's military leaders didn't do as he was commanded. But then they rectified that situation. They went back and won again. And through uh, all of the trials and all the tribulations and all the challenges, they were successful. They were prosperous. Because they believed that the Lord their God would never leave them nor forsake them. If you go and you read the incredible farewell address of Joshua that is in chapter 24, what was the challenge that Joshua gave to the people? Choose for yourselves today. In verse 15. Whom you shall serve. Be it the God of the Amorites or the God from across the river. But as for. Oh come on now. <laughs> you know I got my thing going on here. I got my mojo going on here. You me I want you some more cake. <laughs> come on now. Wake up. But as for. We will serve the Lord. Think about how powerful that was. And at that moment in time, the, 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 the children of Israel stood up and cheered and yelled and talked about how, yes, Joshua, we will continue to serve the Lord. But folks, if you turn over to the next book, in Judges, starting in chapter 2, verse 10, what did it talk about? It talked about the fact that Joshua and all those generations had passed on. And what did the children of Israel do? They forgot. They stopped launching leaders. And then they did exactly as Joshua had told them not to do. They fell down on their knees in front of the Baals. You want to know what is happening in the United States of America right now? We're not passing on those lessons of godly leadership from generation to generation to generation. And if we fail to do that, then we will not be a successful and prosperous nation. 
That's our challenge. If we are going to launch leaders, it has to be about us and our house, and it has to be about our communities, and it has to be about educating our children in the right way. If not, I want you to understand something. The life is not about what you, or you, or you, or you, or you, achieve yourselves in your life. Life is about what you pass on for others to be able to achieve and accomplish in their lives. I stand here today as the testimony of a mother and father who poured their souls into me and trained me up in the way that I should go so that now I shall never depart from it. My two daughters will one day be testimonies of me and my life. Your children will be testimonies of you. And whether or not you raise a straight arrow or whether you raise a crooked arrow. If we go to Philippians, because I want to talk to you about the five aspects of leadership that I've learned over these years since 1982 when I was commissioned as an officer. It's very simple. Let me ask you a question. When do leaders stop leading? What you say, sir? Never. Leaders never stop leading. And that is why Philippians is my favorite book of the Bible. You know why? Because Paul was sitting in prison awaiting to be beheaded when he wrote this letter. It could have been really easy for Paul to dial it in and say, doggone, man. This is how it's going to end for me? After all I've done, all the shipwrecks and all the travels, all the beatings, and I'm still going to end up like this? But no. When you study and understand Paul's letter from the Philippians, you will find the five fundamental aspects of leadership. And what are they? The first one is courage. And Paul says in chapter 4, verse 13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. He didn't say some things. He didn't say a couple of things. He didn't say a few things every other week. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can tell you that my first duty assignment was in an airborne unit. And if my dad was still alive, he would tell you, that boy was scared of heights. And I'll never forget it. When I came back from Fort Sill, Oklahoma to Atlanta, Georgia, and I was getting ready to go down to Fort Benning, Georgia to airborne school. And my dad looked at me. He said, boy, you can do this. You're going to be a leader. You're going to be an airborne leader. You've got to do this. And then he reminded me of this. we got to start reminding our young people about they can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens them. Because when I think about this opioid crisis, when I think about this suicide crisis that are facing our young people today, that's because they don't believe as God told Joshua to be strong and courageous. They don't believe as Paul sitting in a prison waiting to be beheaded. And he said, I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens me. A man that is chained is still showing courage. How much more can we not challenge our young people to do? The second C is competence. And it says this in verse 8 of chapter 4. Finally, brother, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. How great is it that your children could become the new covenant academy and dwell on those things? Instead of some of these other schools where they get filled up with the, the filth and the nastiness of the world. And think about this again. A man sitting down in chain and writing to people to tell them to think of excellence, to think of things that are pure, think of things that are true, think of things that are honorable, 
that's one of the words that we are so lacking in our country is honor. But here at New Covenant Academy, your kids will learn about courage. Your kids will learn about godly competence. Your kids will learn about the third C, which is found in Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. That third C is commitment. Brother, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on the goal for the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. That's commitment. Every single day your children are coming to New Covenant Academy, they are understand what godly commitment is. Wouldn't it be great if all of our children in the United States of America understood godly commitment? The gift of that. The gift that says as long as I'm courageous, as long as I'm confident and thinking of things that are honorable, true, and right, and pure, as long as I'm committed, it's the same as God told Joshua. This book of the law, do not turn from it from the right or to the left. Meditate upon it day and night. But let me tell you another book that we all need to meditate upon. And we all need to understand. This is what binds us together as a people. It's our Declaration of Independence and our Constitution. When you put these two together, you're unstoppable. Why is there a paper clip on it? Because it's falling apart. Because <laughs> I go back to it constantly. This is my American Express card. I never leave home without it. And this, this is the other one that goes with it. That's the commitment. But let's talk about the fourth C. The fourth C is conviction. And it says in 4 and 19, And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You can be committed to a core set of principles and values as a leader, but something's going to come along that challenges you. You've got to show your conviction. What does it say in Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5, about trials and tribulations? The trials and tribulations produces perseverance. And perseverance produces character. And character produces hope. But it's not the hope in man, it's the hope in our Savior, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Too many of us, as Christians, we don't want to do as we say in the military. We don't want to run to the sound of the guns. We want to live in comfort. What does it say in James? Count it all joy. When you come upon trials and tribulations, the only way that you understand how you will become strong is to go through the trials and tribulations. Ladies, all you ladies out here, and I'm, I'm married and I got two daughters. What do y'all like? What did Marilyn Monroe sing about? <laughs> Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Come on, guys. You know what those ladies will be paying up for. It's pretty soon. But what is a diamond initially? It's a black rock. It looks like coal. But what do you have to do to a diamond to make it precious? To make it a gift? To make it that impeccable thing that when we give and love to others, it must go through intense pressure and must go through heat. Steel is only purified through intense heat. What Paul is telling us here that when those trials and tribulations come, when your commitment is challenged, when your confidence is challenged, when your courage is challenged, God's got your back. So you should be convicted to go out there, no matter where the winds are blowing. Thomas Jefferson once said, in matters of style, swim with the current. In matters of substance, stand like a rock. The country needs New Covenant Academy. The country needs straight arrows. And the last C, it wraps it all up. The last C is character. Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. 
Only conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. So that whether I come and see you or remain absent, I will hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. My dad died in 1986. He only saw one promotion, and that was the one where he pinned on my second lieutenant bars. He passed away with my first duty assignment in Italy, which is where he was wounded during World War II in Italy. My mother passed in 1994. She got to see one other promotion. That was my promotion to captain at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. But I must conduct myself in a way that they train me up so that they can know up there in heaven that they shot a straight arrow. Young people and all of us today, courage, competence, commitment, conviction, and character are the qualities of leadership. They're the qualities of a straight arrow. They're in your quiver. Train them upright in the way that they should go. And just always remember, young people, that God will equip you for the mission, just as he did Joshua. He shall not leave you nor forsake you. But the lessons that you are learning here in New Covenant, do not turn from them from the right or to the left. Meditate upon them day and night so that you will have success and prosperity wherever you go. We are launching leaders from New Covenant Academy into the future. And as we light those arrows, we shoot them into the darkness to illuminate the way for this great nation. God bless you all and thank you.